a lot of times just a, a pure typewriting effect is kind of a neat thing. So let's just kind of walk through some stuff here and I'll give you a few pointers. So I'm going to go to the uh, annotations here and let's just let's grab us a text call out and I'll just add it to the timeline at the playhead and I'm going to oh let's uh, just put This is some typing. And we'll put it all on one line. Let's change the color to black. And by default, I'm going to zoom in here so we can kind of see what's going on. So here's our text call out on the timeline. I modified some text, changed the color. Uh, by default, a lot of these callouts in the annotations here have this uh, drop shadow on them. It's not real pronounced with this particular font, but I think what I'm going to do is just be aware that by default, a lot of these will have this drop shadow. So if you don't want the drop shadow, you might think you can go up here and just kind of delete it under text but you actually have to go to the callout properties and then I can either exit out here to get rid of it or if you didn't know this you have this little twirl button down here which means that there is an effect so as I hover down here you'll see my cursor says show effects so I'm gonna twirl that guy up and yep there it is a drop shadow so I'm gonna click on it right on the timeline on the object here and press the delete key. So now I basically just have some text. Right? So in Camtasia 9, as you probably know, we have these things called behaviors. And behaviors are basically just pre-done animations. So what I want to have happen is I basically want this to kind of come into the screen one letter at a time as if it's being typed and this could be you know like on a typewriter or somebody typing on a keyboard on their computer but it's it's a handy dandy effect that you might want to kind of be aware of and whip out periodically so the question is well which one of these behaviors will let us create this typewriter effect and the one that we're going to use is called the reveal behavior. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this guy on the behaviors tab here and you can either drop it on the canvas here or drop it on your element that you want to apply the behavior to. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and by default behaviors do certain things. So here we have the reveal behavior and what you'll notice is that uh, everything kind of comes in more like a, a fade and a slide than an actual typing kind of an effect. So the point I kind of want to make here is that a lot of folks will use behaviors and they'll just leave them set to the defaults over here in all these properties. Well there are some pretty cool things that you can do when you start messing around with some of these other parameters. Now let's do one other thing here real quick. Let's go ahead and change this font to uh, something a little more typewriter like. So you can search Google for typewriter fonts and you'll find all kinds of free fonts. One that I found that I kinda like is called Special Elite. So this looks like a, a typewriter example, but you probably have others. Oh, you can just kind of look through fonts that you have installed. What was another one that was kind of good for maybe a computer kind of thing? Oh, might be something like um, a, a courier. Let's see, where's another one? Quick type mono. Uh, again, it just kind of depends on which uh, ones you might have installed on your computer. 
Okay, so I'm going to undo that and kind of stick with a, a typewritery looking one. So I have my text. I applied this behavior. So let's go to the behavior properties up here. And for typewriting, I'm going to get I click on the during and set this to none and also the out and set it to none. Why? Because when you're typing, you know, you don't usually have a exit kind of a thing and it doesn't sit there and pulsate on the screen or any of the other funky stuff that the defaults for behaviors do. So let's take a look at a couple of these different things here. So one of the things I'll change right away is the type. So how does this behavior kind of work? Does it add it to the entire object? The reveal lets us do things to text. So let's just kind of change this from first to last and see what happens. And pick a direction. So I want it to type from the left. And here's kind of the, the secret sauce. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up to like a hundred percent. What you notice is that instead of that sliding effect, kind of sliding fading effect, now it comes in much more in a letter by letter format just by taking the speed up to a hundred. Right? So we want it to reveal text, not object. And there's a couple ones here you can pick. You can pick left to right or first to last. Uh, I'll try to show you some differences here. But I'm going to choose first to last from left because that's the way it would type and jack the speed up to 100. Now, the kind of secret sauce to the speed is that there's also this thing called offset. Drag to change the delay between each animating character. Oh. So right now it's 0 0.05 seconds. And if I play this again, okay, that's some really fast typing. If you want to make it a little more realistic typing, you can just kind of move this slider. I'm going to take it up to about 0 0.10 seconds. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that is, for all intents and purposes, a typing effect. But you wouldn't know that how to do that if you just were futzing around with, you know, the regular animations and stuff like that. So being able to kind of mess with, especially behaviors, some of these other parameters is how you can kind of get to some of the, the cool things that lie underneath and the real power of using behaviors. Right, so let me try something else here. So I'm going to run it. Right. So the one that you kind of want is text first to last to type in a kind of seamless fashion there. Right, let me just show you an example. Let's change this from instead of first to last, let's go left to right and see what the difference is. Right? So there's two lines of text here. Well, it, it brings them both in left to right. They're not a very realistic typing effect. So again, the key is to just kind of play around with stuff until you find the one that kind of gives you what it is that you want. So that's how you do just like some basic typing. And you can also, well, let's try it. Let's go out to the net here. And let's go to findsounds, findsounds.com. This is basically a search engine for sound effects. So I'm going to search for typewriter. Or you could also search for typing. Again, if you wanted to, you know, just mimic typing on a computer screen. OK. And just preview stuff and see, you know, if you find one that you like. Okay, this one is kind of a clicking noise, which is typing on a, a keyboard, you know, a computer keyboard. 
So you can certainly find things that you might want to use. Uh, I will give you one caveat in using this search engine here. It used to let you pick which file types you wanted. So let me just show you what I mean. In Camtasia, you can use WAV files, W-A-V. You can use MP3. In Camtasia 9, you can also use M4A, but I don't believe you can use files that are like .au. This is rather specific to the Mac platform, right? So just be aware of that. If you listen to one and you really love it, <laughs> and it's a .aiff, for example, you won't be able to use without going through all kinds of conversion hoops and stuff. But Wave, MP3, all work fine. So you can kind of find one that you like. If you want to add such an effect, uh, just drop it into your project here and then you know put it with your text here okay so hopefully that's kind of useful